So in this video, I am going to actually work through this worksheet um, that you were given just to make sure that you understand um, what each question is asking and how you should answer it. So um, looking up here, um, this was already filled in. I completed this for you. So frequency is the number of times something occurs. Relative frequency tells you how many that or like what percent of the time that occurs compared to the total. So I might just say that there are 25 kids that um, prefer reading over math, but if I made that into a percentage, that would be what the relative frequency is. So to figure that out, you just put the frequency over the total, um, and then we make it into a percent. Um, the other thing, though, is you have to be careful because sometimes the total isn't referring to every person that was surveyed. It might just be a specific row or column, which I usually say a specific category. So you just need to be careful when you read the um, question, what it's asking. Okay, so first up, 50 people were surveyed. Let me get this out a little bit so you can see it better. Um, 50 people were surveyed about their favorite ice cream. 23 said it was vanilla. So find the rec, um, relative frequency. So 23 out of 50 people out of 50. And if we make that a percent, that would be 46%. That one's pretty easy. Okay, so to um, complete the two-way frequency table. So these are the totals out here. Um, so we can look this way. We had 45 people with a gym membership and 55 that did not have a gym membership. Um, if we go across, it looks like 32 um, people that were surveyed floss regularly and then 68 people do not floss regularly. And either way, you can go this way or that way, but there were 100 people surveyed. So just be careful. There's not 200 people because all of these people are counted down here as well. So you only want to go one way or the other. All right, so now what we're going to do is um, use this chart to answer these questions below. So of the people surveyed, so out of the 100 people surveyed, um, we want to know how many floss regularly. Floss regularly would be 32 out of 100, so that's 32%. Okay, of the people who own a gym membership, so we're not talking about 100 people. We're only talking about the 45 people that have a gym membership. How many of those floss regularly? So that would be 21 out of 45. So we go to our calculator and we round up. So this is what I got on the calculator. So that is going to make 47%. All right, next one. Of the people who do not own a gym membership, so again, not out of everybody, just those who don't own a membership. So out of those 55 people, what is the relative frequency of people who floss? So out of those 55, there are 11 that floss regularly, which is going to end up being 20%. Okay, does there seem to be a relationship between people who own a gym membership and people who floss regularly? Well, I would say yes, because if you look at we have 47% of the people that own a gym membership floss regularly compared to 20%. So I would say that, yes, there does seem to be a relationship because double the amount of people percentage-wise floss their teeth. So many more that own a gym membership floss their teeth. Now, there could be, um, who knows um, how many reasons why, but um, I would almost say that in general, someone who owns a gym membership is someone that cares about their body and someone that cares about their body would also care about 
the health of their teeth. So that would make sense to me. All right, going on to the next one. All right, so now we have a new chart to complete. Um, so express as um, percentages round to the nearest whole number. All right, so here we go. So what's gonna happen here is we're just gonna work backwards. So if we work backwards on this chart, so if this is a total of 63, then that means 41 people have um, pets that also have kids, all right? And then if we add these together, we get 64. If we subtract 64 from 125, that would give us 61. If we take 22 away from that, that gives us 39. And if we add that together, that should be 62. And then that totals 125, and that totals 125. Okay, so here we go. Of the people surveyed, so out of the 125 people surveyed, what is the relative frequency of people who have pets? So people that have pets are 64 out of the 125 people. So 64 out of 125, I got 0.512, which would be 51%. Okay, of the people who have kids. So I don't want everybody, I only want those people right here. So of the 63 people with kids, so of the 63 people with kids, what is the relative frequency that they have a pet? Well, that would be 41. So 41 out of 63. All right, I'm getting 6507, which would be 65. All right, next one, of the people who do not have kids. So there's 62 people surveyed that do not have kids. What's the frequency that they have pets? Well, that was 23 out of 62. So 23 out of 62 gives me 0 0.3709, which would be 37%. All right, does there seem to be an association between people who have kids and people who have pets? Well, explain. Okay, well, here were the people that have kids and 65% of them also had a pet. Here's people that don't have kids and 37 of them had a pet. So I would say, yeah, having kids certainly has an impact on whether you have a pet. So I would say, yes, um, let's say, you are more likely to have a pet if you have kids. We'll say if you also have kids. So yeah, there certainly is a relationship there. All right, next up, we have another chart that we need to go through. So again, we're just gonna use addition and subtraction here to work this all out. So. If we add 41 and 87, that would be 128. Um, 128 with 92 would give us 220 people. If we subtract 70 from that, that's gonna make 150 people. If we subtract 87 from that, that gives us 63 people. And if we subtract, we can go either way, this way or that way, but whichever way we go, we get 29 right there. Okay, of the people surveyed, what percent have received a speeding ticket? So of the people surveyed, what percent have received a speeding ticket? So that would be 128 out of 220. So 128, oops, out of 220. All right, I got 5818 dot dot dot, which would be 58%. Of the people who drive red vehicles, so we don't care about the blue, we only want, there's 70 people that drive red vehicles. So out of them, what percent have received a speeding ticket? So 41 out of 70 is gonna be 0.585, so that's gonna make 59%. All right, of the people with blue vehicles, so there's a lot more blue cars, so there's 150 
blue cars, what percent have received a speeding ticket? So 87. So 87 out of 150 is 0.58 exactly. So 58%. All right, so what can he conclude from this survey? Well, it's pretty even across the board. So one thing you could say is car color doesn't affect speeding tickets. So it doesn't affect speeding tickets. Or um, you could, I mean, this one you could say anything because you're just concluding something from this. Um, a lot more blue cars than red cars receive tickets if you just look at simply the numbers. So having a red car doesn't mean that you're more likely to get a ticket because twice as many blue cars got tickets. So I would say car color, again, doesn't affect speeding tickets. Okay, so use the results um, to answer these. What is the frequency of people who have not received a speeding ticket? Okay, so people who have not received a free, now pay attention, it says what is the frequency? So that's just 92 because frequency is just how many? So how many people have not received a speeding ticket? Okay, what is the relative frequency? So now we're going to say 92 out of 220. So 92 out of 220. Okay, I got 0.418, which is going to be 42%. And then explain in your own words how frequency and relative frequency are different. All right, so frequency, frequency tells how many relative frequency relative frequency gives the percent oops the percent based on the total and again that total doesn't have to be everybody in the chart um, it can be just one category which would be one row or one column Okay, so that takes care of that worksheet.